I want to know which handheld tactical light is the best. So let's find out together. Now flashlights are super useful tools, but do you actually think of a flashlight as a defensive tool? I do, and that is because some of the training I've been doing shows how effective it is at deterring and controlling potential threats. I know that it allows me to identify my target more clearly, and it allows me to control and potentially deter them because now if I shine it in their eyes, I am taking away their ability to clearly perceive me and what I'm doing, whether I am moving directly back, whether I am drawing a pistol, it helped me have a tactical advantage. For more on using a handheld light as a defensive tool, see our video linked below. Because I'm the curious type and because we've got all this lab equipment here, I decided to go ahead and test a selection of tactical handheld lights. So what makes for a defensive handheld light? Is it uh, the gigantic D-cell mag lights of old? Is it something like this Streamlight wedge? Well, no, I believe it must meet a few criteria. So when I went out looking for a tactical handheld light, what I wanted was something that I could put into my pocket and carry every day. I wanted something that was a good handheld size, not too big, not too small, I prefer something with a Therum switchback capability, and we'll talk more about that in a little bit. I wanted it to have a single mode rear tail cap switch so that I didn't have to fumble with multiple modes or fumble trying to find where the switch was in a defensive situation. So with that in mind, let's take a look at the four lights that I selected to run through our testing. So first up is this nifty little mod light 18650 handheld. This one is running the OKW head on it, and I wanted that head because it did have the highest output of the three visible light heads that Mod Light currently offers. This is a pretty nice factor little light. It is easily pocketed. Uh, it comes with this switch, the low profile carry switch from Theorem. Uh, that works out pretty well. It allows you to drop it into your pocket and uh, keep it hidden away until you need it, and then it is easily drawn out. Um, it has good output. We know from our testing of the PL350, their pistol light, that it's a pretty reliable, pretty robust little light. So next up is the newest entry of the bunch, which is the Cloud Defensive Mission Configurable Handheld, or MCH. And this one happens to be configured with a green high candela head and a black 18650 body. We had to switch some things around with our current stock of cloud defensive lights so that we could get an 18650 body with their high candela head to review so that it wouldn't be at a disadvantage versus the other lights. This light, really, really similar to the mod light in terms of size. The bezels are pretty much the same size. The tail caps are pretty much the same size. The bodies are pretty similar. I think maybe the cloud's a little bit thinner. And then the cloud is just the tiniest bit shorter than the mod light. And it also comes with a Theorem LPC clip. Uh, surprise, surprise, these two companies are competing and uh, I think we're all benefiting from that competition. And these two lights are super similar. And just like the mod light, which has the head that can be unscrewed, you know, obviously this cloud has a head that can be unscrewed and that's how we ended up with this uh, green and black looking thing. So the third light of the bunch is the Streamlight ProTac HLX and this one's uh, the USB version. It's got an 18650 battery in it, just like all the other, uh, other ones, but this one happens to have a USB charging port and it allows it to charge outside, outside the light and go ahead and charge um, just using a USB cord, which they included. Now, compared to the other two lights, this is a step up in size. The bezel is significantly larger and it's getting to the point where I can actually tell the difference in my pocket between the Streamlight 
in between the cloud or the mod light. Uh, it, is, it is certainly a larger light and it is a little bit larger in terms of the length of the body as well. That said, Streamlight has a great reputation in the tactical community. They provide high quality products. We do like the products that Streamlight creates for pistols. And I expect we'll probably like this as far as uh, a tactical handheld as well. Uh, but I will say it is a little bit chunkier of a light. And finally, we gotta have a Surefire in here. Here's the Surefire Fury Tactical. And this is their dual fuel version. And that has the 18650 battery yet again. And just like the Streamlight, it's got a larger bezel and you know, comparison size-wise, it is very similar to the Streamlight and it is significantly larger than the Mod Light or the Cloud Defensive offerings. This too, I expect to be a great light. So naturally, we're gonna go ahead and put each of these lights in our integrating sphere and take readings every five seconds to see how much light is coming out of each one of them. With that, we generate graphs and that allows us to see how these lights perform over time. So the first thing we notice is that if we're looking at the area underneath the curve, both the Streamlight and the Surefire seem to do very well in this test. The Surefire Fury, for instance, goes ahead and produces over 500 lumens for two and a half hours. That is a ton of output, especially since I'm used to doing pistol lights. And the Streamlight puts out over 850 lumens the whole time for the first half an hour. So our big six hour chart shows the Streamlight and the Surefire, especially the Surefire, performing very well for quite a long time. Uh, but let's take a look at just the first five minutes. So for the first minute and a half or so, the Surefire is putting out a blazing amount, but then it starts dropping off. And then the Streamlight takes over as being the leader as far as lumens for the rest of that five minutes. And it kind of continues that way up until the Streamlight drops off around an hour and a half and, uh, and eventually just turns itself off. The Streamlight and the Surefire Lots of lumens, and I think that's great. Now the Mod Light and the Cloud Defensive were selected for their Candela output, and this is not where I expect them to be the leaders. I expect them to be the leaders in Candela, and we're gonna to get to that in a little bit. But right now, I think they actually have reasonable lumen output. One of the things that does surprise me in the first, first five minutes is that the Cloud Defensive, which is rated at 1100 lumens, never actually puts out 1100 lumens for me. So I don't know if it's my sample or if the way Cloud Defensive does their testing does not conform to the ANSI Plato FL1 specs. On the other hand, the Mod Light uh, put out about 700 lumens for the first three minutes straight and that's a nice flat output curve. It didn't really start falling off until after three minutes. And I like that, I like having that steady output not a big spike at the start that just immediately falls off a cliff. They did a nice job tuning the output on this. At the other end, getting towards six hours, this thing's still putting out over 30 lumens, which is, if you're in a dark environment, six hours over 30 lumens, that's an incredible amount of light. That's an incredible amount of utility. That could get you, potentially, especially in the summer here, get you all the way through the night Having this light on and being able to navigate, 30 lumens, if your eyes are adjusted, will actually allow you to navigate around at night if you're gonna use it as more of a, a survival light. That's pretty respectable. So how did these lights do as compared to their own manufacturer claims? Well, Mod Light claims 680 lumens. Uh, we got 717 ANSI Plato lumens. So they met their spec. So Cloud Defensive claims 1100 lumens. We got 825. That's still slightly better than the Mod Light, but it's nowhere near their claim. Now, Surefire claims 1500 lumens, and when you first turn it on, it does come out of the gate at a blazing 1785 lumens. On the other hand, it drops off pretty quickly, so when you do the spec calculation, it actually comes out at 1263 lumens, which is below their claim spec. Runtime on all these lights is huge. The Streamlight is the first one to die at about an hour and a half. These other lights tend to continue to run for hours. We also run a consistency test. That means we run the light for 15 seconds, turn it off, let it rest for 45 seconds, 
and then repeat 10 times. Basically that gives it a 25% duty cycle over 10 minutes. See how well it is as far as consistency in terms of drop off from the highest point to the lowest point. The most consistent was the Streamlight at 97.8%. In other words, the output at the first cycle to the last cycle is within 97% of each other. The Cloud Defensive does drop off a little bit more quickly, which is part of what we saw also in the continuous run graph. That one's at 93.5%, and then the other lights just kind of fall in between. That said, all of these lights, I would consider very consistent. But you're gonna tell me, hey, Shan, you've been saying that lumens are not the most important. It's candela, dummy. You're right. Let's get into candela. But first, if you really enjoy geeking out on lights and you wanna see when we post new content, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. So first to set this up, I went ahead and I posted a poll on YouTube and I asked everybody, hey, which of these four lights has got the highest candela output? And you know, most people said it was the cloud defensive and I think that's because people can generally read and go look on the websites and say, hey, cloud defensive says 71,000 candela versus mod light 69,000 versus these other guys, which are in the mid 25,000 range. So we had 39% say, hey, it's the cloud defensive MCH HC head. You know, what's interesting, people said the Streamlight at 26%. This had the most, second most votes. And I'm not sure why, because the spec sheets say otherwise, but it does show that there is a following for the Streamlight products. And then of course, we have the Mod Light came in third for some reason at 24%. Well, so let's find out. So what I did is I throw all these within our uh, light testing meter. It's set up at one meter and it has the, the sensor at one end and the lights go into a jig at the other. And I test the light both straight on for max candela, but then I also test it at five, 10, 15, 20 degrees. I test it as, it, as you turn the light away from the meter. And what that does is that tells us how hot is the hot spot and then how big of a flood is there, what you'll see is typically you'll see less hot spot and more flood. It tends to be a kind of a flatter curve, but if you're looking for a super high candela light, it's typically gonna be up here in the graph and then go ahead and drop, drop down steeply uh, because it's not putting that energy into the flood, it's putting all the light energy into one focused area. So enough suspense. I've got these two lights here. One of them has 68,000 candela. The other one has 48,000, quite a bit less. Well, the winner is the mod light. The mod light has 68,000 candela, which is within spitting distance of the 69,000 claimed. I, I think that machine inaccuracy could be a, account for that. This one came in quite a bit higher than the cloud defensive. Now it's possible that because I'm using ANSI Plato specs, run this for 30 seconds, and because this does have a fairly significant drop-off curve in terms of lumen output, that that's also affecting the candela output. 48,000 is still very respectable candela. It is, uh, it is quite a bit more than the, uh, the 22,000-ish that both of these other lights put out. But if you're looking for max candela, uh, this mod light really does pull away from the cloud defensive uh, high candela head. As far as the other guys, Streamlight 22,000, Surefire 21,000. Now these both have a significantly bigger flood. And if you're going to need that, say you're searching outdoors and you need to have that peripheral vision, maybe you're doing dock work, maybe you're doing warehouse work where you can't bounce the light off the ceiling, that's gonna be pretty darn useful for those situations. So light quality is important. The first measurement is an easy one, that is color temperature. That is how warm or cool a light appears to the eyes. A warmer light tends to punch through environmental conditions a little bit better. Think of the fog lights on your car punching through fog a little bit better with less being reflected back at you. Personally for a light, I prefer it to fall in the 5500 to 5700 Kelvin range. That's kind of my target. Although lights can be pretty darn acceptable within a wide range of color temperatures. 
So the Mod Light comes in as the coolest light at almost 7,000 Kelvin. The Mod Light and the Stream Light had about 5,950 Kelvin, which these two were the best or the closest in terms of my color temperature target. The Surefire had about 6,350 Kelvin, a uh, little bit cooler, but not as cool as the Mod Light. Now, one other note is that some people say a cooler temperature, such as the Mod Light, helps control subjects by appearing more blinding to the eyes. I don't know if there's any physiology behind that. I've had all these lights shown at me, and to be honest, I have a hard time telling color temperature when I'm having it blazing at my eyes. I don't know. You might be wondering which of these light manufacturers pays us to give their lights a good review. The answer is none. We build holsters for pistols with lights, and that allows us to geek out on lights. Uh, so we're doing this as a community service. We're doing this because uh, you know we love our customers and we love the whole community, and we want everybody to know what the best light is out there. And we wanna see the industry drive forward and create better products for all of us. So I'm gonna get real geeky here for a minute. I'm gonna talk about color rendering. If you don't care, skip to the next segment. But color rendering is important. Our eyes cannot see a certain wavelength of light unless it's generated by the light source. So for instance, if a flashlight doesn't produce the red spectrum very well or at all, we're not going to see that red reflected back to our eyes. Uh, same with skin tones. So a while back, color rendering index was developed and they've got some calculations here, but they've got the average color rendering index and then they've got some critical ones, at least for me, R9 is the red color rendering index. Uh, I think that's important because if somebody happens to have a wound and they're dripping blood, I wanna be able to see that red back at me. I wanna be able to see that rather than just see something that is featureless or doesn't have the contrast for me to tell that somebody's got someone else's blood on their hands. And then there's R13 and R15, which show how well the skin tones, both light and darker skin tones, are, are rendered back to our eyes as well. Really helps with target identification. So for color rendering index, they have the RA, which is an average of all the spectrum indexes. Um, all these lights fall within a point and a half or so of 70, which is definitely not good enough for film and photography work. But as far as tactical lights go, this is about where I see everything fall in the industry. We've got all the details of color rendering index on the website, but I will tell you that as far as CRI, the Streamlight and Surefire are both better than the other two lights, and they're probably better enough that you'd be able to tell the difference. Not a huge difference, but they are a little bit better. Now, I doubt your eyes or even mine would be able to tell the difference between the Mod Light and the Cloud Defensive, but the Mod Light did squeak out a little bit better scores, especially on the red and the skin tone colors. Moving on to the practical testing, we use video and photography to help us take pictures and see, okay, which light provides which sort of contrast, which one performs better. First up is our warehouse test, and this has the subject 40 feet away from the light operator. In this case, the subject was me. I gotta say that being the subject, all of these lights perform pretty well. I would say that the Surefire and the Streamlight were kind of on the edge of being painful. I would say that both the Cloud Defensive and Mod Light were both painful. I, I could tell a little bit the difference between the Mod Light and the Cloud Defensive, but when you're getting hit in the eyes, it's really hard to tell that difference in Candela. In addition, you can see in the video that the Surefire and the Streamlight did a better job filling out the space, kind of allowing the operator to see that flood. Yeah, that's that's pretty bright. I can't see it, any of you. It hurts. Yee. That one, I don't know some about the color of it. It seems to be a little more painful, at least when it came on. That one's easier to look at. Um, I cannot see you though. I cannot see any of you. That one feels 
a little bit strong, maybe more painful than the Streamlight even. I don't know. In the outdoor space, the first test I ran was having these shine at targets about 340 to 440 yards. Uh, the Streamlight and the Surefire both didn't quite have the candela necessary for me to do positive identification. I could see the white target, I could see that it existed, but if it was a person, I wouldn't be able to tell what they were doing, perform any sort of uh, PID on the target. The Cloud Defensive and the Mod Light both had the candela to get me out there to see more clearly what was going on. Um, and it, they both worked fairly well at even the further target. And as I usually do, I went ahead and I set up a vehicle with its headlights pointing at me, with its high beams on, and tried to see into the passenger compartment, even from directly in front of the beams. What happens is, is with the beams pointing at my eyeballs, and in this case also pointing at the camera, it goes ahead and reduces the opportunity for the eyes to open up so that I can see more clearly inside. Um, this is punching through a photonic barrier and it does require a degree of high output so that it gets enough light on target so that I can see with my, my uh, pupils gone ahead and contracted down a little bit. The Streamlight and the Surefire did okay. I could see the passenger headrest. I could kind of see the driver's headrest. They, they got me in there. I, I was not super excited about how much I could see. The Cloud Defensive and Mod Light both did pretty well in this test. I could see in fairly well. Uh, happy about that. I think that these would work um, for that sort of circumstance. Finally, I set up the camera by the passenger side door and I tried to look inside the cabin with my flashlight. Uh, these windows are tinted, so it's a little bit hard to see in. I will say that the, they all worked. The mod light and the cloud were probably a little bit better because their uh, spot is a little bit more focused. There was less splashback from the window back at me, uh, reflecting back at me, making it hard to see in. So having that more focused hotspot allowed me to see in a little bit better. I got the flashlight up against the window. All of them worked just fine. Uh, just really was a question of how far away I could be. A couple of days ago, I took a look at how the buttons and the theorem switchback work on these. So let's review that. Switches are really important and I think they're overlooked in terms of lights today. That's how we interface with the light. And we typically, in a tactical light, we want to have a partial press as being a momentary mode and then a full press as being the constant mode but we also need to be careful about negligent discharges. The second thing I typically want is I typically want a switch back on my light. That allows me to set that into my pocket here, and then go ahead and have that set with the ring there. So when I grab, I grab through that ring and now I've got my light. But then even more importantly, if I need to go to my gun, I can go ahead and draw that, switch this over, and then the idea is I press onto the part of that switchback and that actually allows me to activate that light. I don't want it accidentally turning on when I'm just bumping it. So I've got here the four lights and first off the mod light, what I see is a flush switch and then when I go ahead and get on it, it's just a slight press to turn on momentary. Next is the cloud. The cloud has this nifty little feature here. It's a switch that actually is not recessed. It actually stands above and it has a noticeably harder amount of force required to activate. And it feels like it's actually less travel. I, I'm guessing about two thirds of the travel, call it two millimeters of travel before it clicks on. But the really nifty thing about the cloud is that you have these little removable, they actually call these the ND protectors. It comes with three of these little ND protectors. 
One of which is just doesn't even raise up versus this. And then one's in a middle setting and one's in a high setting. So really nifty the way Cloud Defensive went ahead and gives us three options for how we want to run this. All right, moving on with the switches though. I'm actually gonna talk about the Streamlight here, the ProTac HLX. And it looks like their switch is about flush. This switch actually feels pretty darn close to the mod light switch uh, in terms of both travel and pressure. So lighter, yeah, lighter pressure, kind of that two and a half, three millimeters of travel. Then we've got the Surefire and that is definitely a protruding switch. I can turn it on and I can actually turn it into constant mode while I'm, while I'm just setting it on the table. Constant mode. None of these other lights will do that maybe a little bit more pressure than the mod light. So now the question is, how well did these work with the switchback? So we know the mod light works with the switchback because I purchased that in the past. So this is the switchback 2.0. So I've got the medium ND protector in here and let's see how well I can go ahead and get out and activate that light. Okay, it's a little bit tougher than the mod light but I can do it pretty reliably. All right, so that's the 2.0. Let's uh, take that off and see which, if any of these, fit on the Streamlight and the Surefire. Here's the Streamlight, and that is quite comfortable, easy to use. I could see using this just like this. I am, I am reasonably impressed. All right, last one to try is the Fury Tactical, let's try it. So, grip inside the fist, switch back, out, off. So I think that as far as the switch goes, this is not my favorite. It is too easy to activate. I think that if I was using a two-handed grip and I was moving that flashlight, heavy flashlight, moving around a little bit, it would actually go ahead and turn the light on when I didn't want it. And I think that could get you killed. I really like that Cloud was thinking out of the box, give us something a little bit different as far as ND protection. I think that it's a, among tactical guys, I think a number of us have had the problem of having, having that ND of our flashlight. So my favorite's the Cloud. I, I'd say that my second favorite's probably a tie between the, between the mod light and the Streamlight. They're both very similar. And then the, uh, the Fury's fine if you're not running a switchback. Now, if you are running a switchback, the Fury's not really a good solution. I think that there needs to be some better way to get that button a little bit lower. It is simply too, too darn high. All right, so this is Future Shan. Uh, I completed pretty much all that testing last week, and now I've got some updates. I talked to Sean at Cloud Defensive and I'm very thankful that he took the time to talk with me. Uh, I feel like he knows what he's doing and uh, it looks like the light does not quite meet his expectations that we had tested. So what I have done, there's a, in light testing, there's a million variables. Uh, one could be how I have my, my equipment set up, how I have things set up and calibrated Another one could be in exactly how and when I turn things on. You know, Sean spent some time talking to me about their lights start off extremely high, but they ramp down very quickly. And that is mostly to do with thermal management. When you drive these LEDs really hard, they get hot and they get hot fairly quickly and you've got to start throttling them back to uh, keep them from destroying themselves or getting too hot, too hot in your hand. So, so he suggested that I start at time zero and I get time zero measurements on all of these lights. Now I did that and I've got some evidence, uh, took some pictures of, of that and I'm gonna show you the results as I'm talking, but the cloud light still did not have quite the same amount of output as the Mod Light OKW. Bear in mind that the cloud defensive is specced at 71,000 candela versus the mod light at 69,000 candela. Now, Sean also pointed out that, uh, you know, that there's a bunch of variants across these lights, and I agree. He said that they do their testing and they spec their stuff based upon averages 
across huge sets of lights. And I think that's great, except for if somebody gets something that is actually under spec, the average doesn't really matter to you if the light you get is putting out some 23% below spec, which is what I got in my testing. So I was gonna send that back to Cloud Defensive for their testing, but I also tested another 18650 body with the EDC head and it came below specs as well. So I thought maybe there's an issue with my equipment. I'm gonna send both these lights off to UL for testing. We will post an update. Once I get those updates from UL, you'll know how many candela it is once I have that. All right, we're almost done with this behemoth review. Let's talk about charging. Let's talk about reliability and then get to the summary. Reliability for me is a major concern. That's why I'm going to torture test each of these lights in a separate video. Okay, here's the summary. ModLight has the highest candela to help you more effectively control subjects and to more effectively see further out distances and punch through photonic barriers. Uh, cons are that it's the most expensive light of the bunch. So the Cloud Defensive Pros are that it has these nifty little ND protectors that you can screw in and out. That helps me set it up so that I have less of a chance of having those hot pocket issues where the light turns on in my pocket. And it does help me tune for the Theorem switchback capability that I'm looking for. And speaking of switches, the switch requires more force to activate, which will also help reduce the chance of a negligent discharge in my pocket. I, I kind of like those features. In addition, this thing keeps delivering usable light for hours, literally hours. I didn't run this all the way down, so I don't know where it finally would drop down below 10 lumens, but it kept going forever. If you're looking for a survival light, this one does a pretty nice job of that. On the other hand, it does have the lowest CRI of the group, and it's you know marginally lower on reds and skin tone. Streamlight Protac HLX is a bargain of a light at $79. It provides really good quality light output. It provides good flood, and uh, it's a super consistent light. The only cons would be that it seems to be a little bit bigger in the bezel. I would prefer to see that a little bit smaller, and that it does run out of gas about an hour and a half to an hour and 45 minutes in. The Surefire does have, at least within this group, the highest quality light output, and it does have the highest absolute lumen output. On the other hand, it is pretty expensive. The bezel's big, and I can't get the Theorem switchback on it tuned the way I would want. The combination of a heavy bezel and the switchback with the protruding switch means potentially a lot of negligent discharges. So it's a really hard decision for me as far as which I'm going to run. Well, I can't run any of these because these are moving on to destructive testing here in a little bit. But I'm actually gonna go ahead and run the Cloud Defensive MCH, but with the EDC head. You tell me, let me know which of these lights you're going to run or which of these lights you do run and why down below. If you wanna see us destroy all these lights, please hit the subscribe button and notification bell down below. We're going to be destroying every one of these except for one. Thank you for watching. This is Shan with Works LLC. Have a blessed day.